Good afternoon and thank you for joining our November Plugin and Prosper webinar series, Generating Public Relations for Your Community. A little bit about us. I, I'm Roy and I'm with More Diversified Services. We are a national full service boutique consulting firm specializing in senior living and healthcare and we do work with both for-profit and not-for-profit. We've been in the business for over 40 years and offer a myriad of services like strategic planning, SWOT analysis, employee turnover and retention strategies, uh, investment and finance advisory services. And we also have a great service called our shared executive, which is a retainer agreement. Basically, it just gives you access to our knowledge base for uh, a predetermined amount of hours each month and it's very cost effective when you look at the you know, the difference in our retainer agreement versus hiring a full-time employee to do what we could do for you if anybody would like to talk to me after the webinar about that I'd be glad to share a little bit more with you and I'll give you some ways that you can reach out and contact me after this is over. Again, my name is Roy Barker. I'm the Director of Special Projects here at MDS and uh, my background is in finance, gerontology, marketing, also specializing in re employee retention uh, strategies as well as training and coaching. So again, I want to thank Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us. And what we do is a little bit different. We do a 30-minute format where it's just more of an informational dump. And then if we don't have time for questions, I do encourage you to contact me directly at my email. And we also will give you phone number at the end of this presentation. And then we ask that if you could just take a couple minutes to complete the survey at the end, that would be great to give us some feedback on uh, you know what we might could do better and also some future topics that we could talk about so today's outline is basically going to be you know defining PR public relations differentiating PR from advertising and then also talking about some different ideas for uh, your community also our um, because of the holidays in December, we're going to take the month off from our uh, webinar series, but we will be back in January. So go ahead and mark your day for January 21st at 1 p.m. Central Time. And then over the course of the next month, we will get back with everybody with more information on what the topic will be. So the great thing about PR is it's usually very subtle but the message is repetitive and can stick with the readers or the uh, the audience in which it's presented. Uh, like a, a good example of that is uh, sponsorships and press releases and being quoted in different articles. It's, uh, it's a lot more or less in your face than what we would consider advertising to be. So it, it tends to be very subtle, but it does stick around with the reader or the consumer of the message. So what is PR or public relations? Defined in the dictionary, it's just providing information or managing information about your organization um, and between your organization and the public. Here again, public relations is not going to be the end-all, be-all for your marketing efforts, but it is a part of a well-integrated marketing plan. As you can see with this example, you know, it goes with uh, your search engine marketing, live events, your other forms of advertising like uh, newspapers, magazines, uh, placement on other websites, and then the direct mail email marketing campaigns, TV, radio, website, this just fits in. But what I do see is that a lot of the clients that I've worked with as of late, the public relations component has been one that just hasn't been taken full advantage of. So that's why we thought we would uh, 
put this webinar on this month just to kind of remind people that public relations is very important, but also to give you a few hints of some things that you might want to do. Before we get too far, far along, one thing I want to do is I want to do a poll and this first question we're going to do is, do you use PR as part of your marketing communication plan? And it looks like at about 70%, about, oh, it looks like 100% of y'all do use uh, marketing as part of your integra overall integrated marketing plan. So that's great. So we may be preaching to the choir a little bit, but what we can do is reinforce some of the ideas that you may have already. So let's talk about some different types of PR. Of course, we've got social media, press releases, newsletters, blogs, special events, uh, sponsorships, employee relations and things that go out through your employees, and of course, you know, community, community and media relations. Usually when we think of uh, PR, we think of two different stereotypes, the, and use, they're two polar extremes, actually. First is we think of the outrageous attention-getting event, like uh, a great example used to be the flash mobs that would show up in Grand Central Station or other very public places, and they would do some kind of routine, and it was... Uh, very attention grabbing for their audience and then they were able to post YouTube videos to even track more attention. And then the second kind has usually been a spin on some bad information where something has gone terribly wrong for a company and so now they have somebody out there trying to spin it in a good way and great example of that might be the uh, Gulf disaster, oil disaster a few years ago with BP and so what they've tried to do now is they've got some big campaigns where their workers are you know doing interviews and uh, different spots on TV saying how that they've cleaned this uh, clean the Gulf up and it's back to normal or better than it was when they found it but really PR, there's a wide range in between those two extremes that I think that in the senior living industry that we can tap to um, either draw attention to our brand or reach out to some new and different consumers. So how does PR differ from advertising? I think first off is advertising is what you pay for and publicity is what you pray for. That's probably a very profound statement to think about. As we go through this, uh, you know, advertising is paid media and public relations is earned media. The one point of advertising, I guess, that is, is the, um, the advantage of advertising is that while you do pay, you get to control the text, you get to control the timing, and you get to control the placement of your ad, you know, if it comes out on a Sunday in the sports section and um, you know at the front page or last page or wherever you may have that whereas and then uh, also in advertising it's that it's you're trying to tell people how to feel about your brand telling them why they should love you and uh, how great you are whereas in public relations it's generally free so you you don't have the same control. You're at the mercy of the person writing it to make sure that they get it right, depending on the publication. Uh, a lot of uh, journalists don't let you approve their copy before they send it out. So, and have had a few instances in the past of where facts were wrong and things got messed up, but when it's free, unfortunately, that's a risk you take. So you wanna be sure you get somebody you trust and be sure that you, when you tell your story or put your points out there, that it's very well understood and there's no room for error there. And then also in the timing and placement, here again, you're at the mercy of the media outlets on when it goes to press or when you 
you know, when it's actually published or shown on TV or uh, if it's a radio spot. Sometimes you have to, you know, be sure and get these things done well in advance where they're, uh, they can get them on their rotation schedule and be sure and get them out there in a timely manner. And then the other thing, the other great part I think about publicity is instead of me telling you how great I am and how you should feel about me, this is actually going to be a third party legitimizing you in some way, either showcasing you are as an expert or showing how great your services are, or maybe, um, uh, you know, them telling you how good your services are telling the uh, general public. So here's an example of advertising and I, I chose both of our, you know, the largest cell providers because they are both always seem to be in your face telling you how great their coverage is, how fast their networks are, how reliable. And, and it's always questionable. I mean, if, if you're on the AT&T network and you're in a spot where you don't have any coverage, then you're going to question this, you know, how reliable is it, how, and even how fast it is, if you can even get a connection. Same with Verizon, you know, they're the best network, and so really them telling us that, we're very skeptical now. If, if I'm a Verizon user and I have great service and have had a good experience, then, you know, I'm telling my friends it's kind of uh they take that to be a more genuine message because it's a an actual user that's putting that message out there. It's a third party. So it becomes a little bit more uh, trustworthy than the company just telling you how great they are. So let's look at some different types of public relations examples. This one here is um, this gentleman, uh, Marshall Tilden, was quoted in the Wall Street Journal. And this article was about building a wine cellar in your home. And so if you were in the market to build a wine cellar in your home and you read this article, you would think, gee, Marshall Tilden is an expert at this. If I really want done, you know, the Wall Street Journal has published him, so he must be, you know, the man to contact. So what you would do is, you know, if you were in the market for this, you may want to pick up the phone and call Marshall and talk to him. So this is an example of a third party, you know, the Wall Street Journal or the, the um, journalist kind of validating that Marshall Tilden is the, an expert in this field. Who's that handsome guy there? Yeah, this is one that I actually got uh, uh, some credit for not long ago. It was 10 skills and qualities that employers want to see in candidates. And they attributed the uh, you know the number six slot to me, and so here again, it's just a uh, another way that I've been legitimized through Recruiter.com for them saying obviously this guy knows something about uh, recruiting and hiring people. Now this is a public relations example that we released uh, in 2014, and basically. What it is, it is just uh, we were introducing some wellness checks and it was just a way to, uh, you know, get the word out there, blanket the internet and some other uh, media outlets with this release that if somebody did a search for wellness checks or more diversified services, then, then we would come, come up. And, and also the link backs to our site, which we'll get into a little bit more here in a few minutes. <clears throat> So let's talk about some more senior living focused examples. Uh, this one here is an article about uh, trying to make home health and senior living seamless and they quoted uh, an executive director named Melinda Moore. So here again, if you're a community or a provider or maybe even a consumer and you're reading this, you're thinking, wow, here's senior housing news. They are, uh, you know, a leading industry publication and they've gone to this Miss Moore to get some information so obviously if I need to know more about trying to integrate home health and senior living she would be the one for me to call. Melinda's not telling us how great she is but Senior Housing News is legitimizing her to say 
obviously she must be an expert in this field because that's who we've gone to for a quote on the subject. This is another example with the uh, CEO of Link Senior. Basically, you know, care.com quoted him talking about some fresh ideas for fun and assisted living. So if you were needing to talk to somebody about some different activities, then uh, Charles may be the guy that you would want to call. And here again, it's not Charles telling us how great he is, but we're taking that because care.com featured him that he's a, an expert on this topic. Now this is a birthday celebration and these are always good. I think journalists uh, and media outlets are always looking for great human interest stories. You know, they do enough hard hitting news, but they, they like these, uh, these happy stories to come their way as well. So talking about uh, birthdays, like this is 103rd birthday, talking about uh, maybe, maybe you're having a sock hop event and also the holidays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas are both coming up, so this would be a great time, maybe a little uh, short notice for Thanksgiving, but for Christmas, sure, to get out there and contact the different media outlets in your area, you know, to see if they can pick up a story on the celebration that you're having, or maybe the human side of it about, uh, you know, residents that don't have visitors and don't have family that maybe can coax some volunteers to come in to you know help them out or to show how great it is that family members do come participate with their loved ones who are in senior living. A lot of great ideas on, on this topic here. So what are some of the benefits of PR? Well I think there's more credibility than regular advertising because here again instead of me being there screaming how good I am and why you should use me and uh, telling you all that stuff about myself is now it's a third party who is kind of legitimizing that or in some way it's the um, it's kind of more subtle with the information getting out there but yet consumers still being able to pick up what kind of services that you have. Uh, it increases organic results and visibility in your search engines through link backs like the uh, press release that I had talked about earlier, that went out to all the major networks, CNBC, ABC, CNN, Fox News. It, it was, I think there was over 200 media outlets that it went to. Now, that doesn't mean that it always made it on the air or that it was talked about, but it did go to their website, which that is a good thing because, uh, you know, Number one, Google likes link backs. They like to, uh, they like for other websites to have links coming back to your site. But they also are changing a little bit to be more content oriented, where uh, you know they want to make sure that it's credible content. So if uh, you know Joe Blow sites got a link back to you, it may not carry a lot of weight. But if CNN, NBC, ABC, the major networks or even, uh, you know, like senior housing news industry specific uh, publications, if they have link backs to your site, then that will help you on your search engine optimization, ranking higher in Google and Bing searches. And then, of course, it's an economical way to reach a larger audience just due to the fact that uh, you're not having to pay for the placement you know, now there still is going to be time invested with you trying to create some content and uh, run down a journalist or reporter or a news outlet to try to get uh, get your information published. But it's not, you know, even if you were doing an advertisement, you'd still have to create the copy or pay to have it created and then pay for the placement. So it can be a little more economical than advertising. And it can improve your company image and public perception, you know, if you're doing some sponsorships. Um, the other thing, if you're just putting out information like public service announcements of maybe you're doing a, uh, you know, a health screening or maybe uh, you're, you've written an article about uh, something that affects seniors that it's just generally in their life. It's not... Uh, 
senior housing base, but just a general topic on seniors, then people will, uh, you know, have a much softer perception of you. And again, it can develop public awareness of your company for those that may be unfamiliar with your brand or your community. And then again, the CEO on the SEO side, the link backs of all these different organizations that now have a link back to your website will help you in your um, placement on search engines. And then audience engagement. It's very important to engage your audience, uh, you know, especially when you're using some of the social media like Facebook and Pinterest is, you know, ask questions, get opinions, try to have a two-way conversation instead of just uh, a one-way conversation. And speaking of that, we'll take a break here and let's do another survey. The um, This question is, have you had measurable success using PR as part of your overall marketing plan? And wow, looks like 100% uh, answered that question, the affirmative. So that's good. That means that your efforts are paying off, which is our next topic here actually is the value. You know, what is the value in public relations for your community? It's kind of gr a gray area as far as the measurements. It's it's hard to collect data on exactly you know what is the return on investment because so much depends on the publications, the readers, the engagement, uh, the size of the media outlet. It it just it's I could not find a lot of information on that. But what I do suggest is you know this needs to be broken out as a separate tracking category for your company or your community and not just lumped under advertising or newspaper or whatever your larger category may be. Uh, you know, break it out to a public relations so that way you can see in the end if public relations is paying off for you, you know, because like I said before, you're still gonna have to invest the time to create the content and run the journalists down. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we are getting some return on investment and here again, the ROI equation for that would just be the total dollars earned off of the PR. How many residents did you bring in? You know, minus the total invested, which would be your time. Your time is valuable, so you need to count that. How many hours did you spend on it? You know, basically what is a loaded rate for yourself and to see, and then divide that by the total invested to see if it does have a positive return on investment for you. So who do we need to contact? Well, let's start with the industry specific, you know, media and bloggers. Of course, we've got Senior Housing News, McKnight's, and then there are some other uh, bloggers and larger organizations that are out there that if you have a story, you can contact them, uh, a journalist on their staff and tell them what your idea might be and uh, see if you can, if there's any interest in them picking the story up. Of course, there's local media, newspapers, radio stations, TVs, uh, green sheets, whatever uh, may be in your specific market. And this, what you could focus on, may be more of the pub public service announcement is, uh, if you're having a health screening at your community, you could get some coverage for that. If you just want to write an article about, uh, you know, maybe how seniors can hydrate through the summer months or something about uh, how they can, you know, better maintain through the winter months, those types of articles and that type of information would be good for your local media, you know, as well as grand openings, birthdays, just Again, there's a whole wide range of topics that they might be interested in. And then we have student media outlets at, at your high schools and at colleges. That would also be great source. And then the digital media outlets, there's all kinds of web, websites and digital publications, not only for the industry, but also locally that um, may give you some great exposure. 
and then of course the national news organizations CN, CNN, CNBC, Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS. So what are some must do's? Well the very first thing is developing great content. It, it, you just have to really uh, sit down and take the time to to figure out a good story. It needs to be unique as well. Um, because a lot of times the, the these journalists are approached by people all over their market area, you know, trying to pitch the same story. So think of something that may be unique and interesting to their readers, and uh, you'll have a much better chance of being picked up. Be patient. Just remember that journalists are busy. They have a lot of phone calls with people presenting all types of ideas to them, and so basically. We're wanting something for nothing, so we do have to be patient, and um, the the next point is to stay after them, to follow up, follow up, follow up. They, um, they get busy. They're working on other stories. They may forget about you, so sometimes a, a follow-up is just a little friendly reminder to them. I've, I've had this happen to me before where I've been interviewed on a story, and then it didn't. It, for some reason, it got bumped out, and then they kind of forgot about it. So just a, a you know friendly follow up. Sometimes it's just like, hey, how's it going? Let's meet for some coffee. And then it it'll jog their memory to you know think about this story that they have on the shelf, and then they can go ahead and pick it back up and and get it published for you. And then selfless ideas. Um, sometimes it's it's not always great to the uh, for your pitch to always be about your community and getting people to come come out and visit you as much as it could be the events that are happening at the community the uh, like I said earlier the public service announcements where basically it just covers seniors in general but what you do you'll get credit you know whoever the the writer was will get credit for that or credit for um, get attributed in the article and then it'll be the communal community where you work will be attributed to with the link back from the article to your website so if somebody's reading it and interested they see either your name or your community's name they can click on a link and get back over there quickly and then timing please remember that uh, you know deadlines are very important if you do put a good pitch out to a journalist just remember uh, whatever their deadlines are, keep that in mind so you can get it to them early if possible. And because if you miss miss a couple deadlines and put them in a bind, then they probably are not going to want to work with you anymore. So it's very important. So now what? Well, I guess it's just good to get out there and, you know, hit the ground running, try to develop you a good story and then reach out to some of the media contacts that are in your market area. Also want to ask you again to be sure and save the date for January 21st of 2016, 1 p.m. Central Time. We haven't decided on the topic of the next webinar, but that's the date it'll be, and we'll be putting out more information uh, you know, between now and Christmas, and especially after the first of the year once we get through the holidays. Again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, related to PR, advertising, or just the senior living industry uh, as a whole, please give me a call, my email address, my phone number. Be glad to talk to you. Thank you again for your time. We hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and a Merry Christmas. Uh, be safe, and we will see you in 2013, uh, 2016. Thanks a lot.